We're going to do a few more examples here with finding domains of functions. Um, so we talked about, first of all, we want to identify what type of function it is. So here, this function doesn't look like much, but one thing is we want to rule out the fact that it's not a polynomial function. Um, it's not a polynomial function because we have a variable that is raised to a negative exponent. And of course, if I have a variable raised to a negative exponent, what does that imply? Well, of course, that does imply that I can bring this down to the bottom part of a fraction. So we can actually rewrite this. And that's the first thing that we want to do when we're looking for domains is, first of all, we want to take, sh take every exponent that's negative and make it positive. All right, so as soon as we do this, what we can see is that we have a variable that's in the denominator. And that rules out polynomial function, and that actually shows us that this is actually a rational function. And when we have a rational function, we said we want to take the denominator, and we want to set it equal to 0. And we want to solve to see what would cause that denominator then to become 0. What x value would do that? Well, of course, when we have a fractional exponent, we know that the 3 then, denominator of that exponent, would become the index of a radical. And that gives us x to the power of 2. And now we have a radical equation that we can solve. So in order to get rid of the cube root, then I would cube both sides. We're going to raise both sides then to the power of 3. So that now gives us x squared. And of course, 0 cubed is 0. Then we would take the square root of that. x squared equals 0. We want to solve for x. So we're going to take the square root of both sides. And technically, of course, we always do plus or minus. But what that actually gives us then is just x equals 0. So this is the only value that we have to exclude from this rational function. Okay, So if I have my number line from negative infinity to positive infinity, and I'm going to mark 0 there, put an open circle, highlight everything to the left and to the right. So the only problem value that we have then is 0. So from negative infinity to 0, not including 0, and then we're going to unite that with what's on the right side. We're going to go from 0, not including 0, all the way to positive infinity. So this becomes our domain. All right, this next one's interesting because we actually have no problems at all, even though it appears to be a rational function. And remember that it's a rational function because we have a variable that lives in the denominator. So we're going to take that denominator and set it equal to 0. And we're going to find, kind of root out any x values that might cause problems. Well, when we go to solve this one, of course, for x, we're going to subtract 1 from both sides. That gives us x squared equals negative 1. And since we have a square on the x, we're going to take the square root of both sides, plus or minus. Now, what is the square root of negative 1? Remember we said earlier that's the definition of an imaginary value. Remember that we're only putting in real function, real numbers into the function to begin with. This says that you have to exclude these two imaginary values. Well, the rule is that we have to put a real number in. We're only allowed to put in real numbers. I'm not going to put in imaginary numbers anyways. So there's really no need to exclude imaginary numbers since I wasn't going to put them in anyways. So when we look at our real number line, there's nothing to exclude because there's no imaginary numbers to begin with on the real number line. So I can actually use the entire real number line, nothing to toss out. So our domain actually turns out to be all real numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity. So basically no real problems there. If your only problems are imaginary, then you really don't have any problems. Our next example is going to be nice and easy. When we look at example 10, f of x equals, and we look at the equation that we have there, um, there's no fractions, no negative exponents. This is what we would call a polynomial function. No square roots. It's a very nice, very nice function. So polynomial function. Now, if you think back to your algebra days, 
um, this would be a quadratic function. And of course, quadratic functions, that square function is going to look like a parabola. And in this case, it's actually a parabola pointed upside down because of the negative leading coefficient. If you think about that graph, what would be the domain of that graph? So the x values actually would extend all the way from the left to the right. No holes, no gaps, no asymptotes, no jumps, nothing except we're using all of those x values. So if you think about it, the domain of the x values that were used, all real numbers. And for polynomials, the domain of polynomial functions is all real numbers. So that's nice and easy. Alright, for our next example, um, we notice that we have a negative exponent. And that negative exponent specifically here applies to this group. It does not apply to the negative 10. So let's rewrite this function using only positive exponents. I'm going to bring that entire group down and I'm going to make that a positive 2 exponent. So what type of function is this? Well, definitely not a polynomial function because as soon as I made that exponent positive, now we have a variable in the denominator and this would be called a rational function. And we know that if we have a variable in the denominator, if we have that rational function, that we want to make sure that the denominator is never zero. So our first step, we remember, is to take the denominator and set it equal to zero. So we're going to take the whole thing, x plus 3 squared equals zero, and we're going to solve for what x value would cause this to happen. So since we have this group being squared, we're going to take the square root of both sides. Don't forget your plus and minus. So we end up with x plus 3 equals uh, square root of 0 is 0, so plus or minus square root of 0 is just basically 0. Now that leaves us with a really nice easy equation to continue solving. All we have to do is subtract 3 from both sides and we get x equals negative 3. So this is the only value that we will need to exclude from the real number line. Okay, so I encourage you to draw your number line, mark off the value that you're excluding, We'll put on our negative and positive infinity. Put an open circle on the values that you are excluding and highlight everything around it. So we're going to exclude uh, just the negative 3, so we're going to include negative infinity all the way to negative 3, open parentheses because we're not including the negative 3, union, and then to the right of negative 3, we're going from negative 3 all the way to positive infinity and we're not including any of those endpoints. Okay, so this becomes our domain. These are the values that we're actually allowed to use in place of x in that function. Okay, once again, we don't have a polynomial function because we have a negative exponent. So we're going to make that exponent positive first before we start looking for the domain. Okay, so we're going to bring the negative 2, we're going to bring the group that it applies to, we're going to bring it down to the bottom part of our fraction. So this obviously now is a rational function and we want to take that denominator and we're going to set it equal to zero. So we're going to take the entire group that's being squared there and set it equal to zero. So of course the first thing I'm going to do to solve for x is take the square root of both sides. Don't forget plus or minus. So we get x squared plus 3 equals, of course, just zero. We're going to subtract 3 from both sides. So we get x squared equals negative 3. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to lay down square root on top of both sides. Don't forget the plus and minus. So I get x is equal to plus or minus. Now I notice that their square root has a negative underneath it. So we're taking the square root of negative 3. This actually simplifies once again to be an imaginary value. So that would give us a uh, square root of 3 i times i, or i times the square root of 3. This is an imaginary value. So anytime we take the square root of a negative value, we get an imaginary number. So this tells us that we have two imaginary problems, and if we have imaginary problems, then we have no real problems. So that would indicate that there's nothing to exclude from the real number line, 
So our domain will be all real numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, for our next example, um, we want to rule out polynomial. It's not a polynomial function. Okay, and why is that? Well, we see that we have a negative exponent. And we know that anytime we have negative exponents, we want to make them positive before we go and find the domain. Now, the negative exponent only applies to what's directly in front. So it only applies to the x. It does not apply to the 16. So we're going to bring x to the positive 2 power down to the bottom part of that fraction. So now that we see positive exponent form, we know that we have a rational function. So we're going to take the denominator, and there's only one denominator here, that's x squared. We're going to set that equal to 0, and then we're going to solve for x. What x value would cause this to happen? And nice and easy here, because you're going to take the square root of both sides. Don't forget our plus and minus and we get x equals 0. And that's the only value that we need to exclude from our number line. So our domain will be all real numbers except for 0. So we're going to include everything to the left of 0 and everything to the right of 0, but we will not include 0 itself. Uh, a few more examples here. Uh, the next one is actually a little bit easier than the last one. When we look at our function, we see that it's definitely not a polynomial function because we do have a fraction that has a variable in the denominator. So that automatically gives us a rational function. And we only have one denominator, and that's x. If I set x equal to 0, well, the only value that can make that denominator equal 0 would be 0 itself. So we're going to exclude that. And so once again, since we're only excluding 0, we're going to use everything to the left and everything to the right. And we're going to unite those two separate intervals to form our domain. Okay, example 13. We know right away, once again, that we can rule out the idea of it being a polynomial function. Because we have that negative exponent, and we know that when we see negative exponents, we want to make them positive. So what does this negative exponent apply to? Well, it applies to everything in this entire group in the parentheses there. So we're going to rewrite this. Okay, so we're actually going to bring it down to the bottom. We're going to bring it down to join the 9. Since the 9 is already at the bottom of the fraction. We're going to put that group next to it. And we're going to raise that to the positive 2 thirds power. Anytime you bring something to the bottom or the top of a fraction, um, you end up multiplying it times what is already there at the bottom or the top of the fraction. Since the 9 was already there, we are multiplying whatever we bring down times that 9. Okay. All right, so we're going to set our denominator of our rational function, since we have a variable in the denominator. We're going to go ahead and set that equal to 0. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and divide by 9. Okay, we're going to solve for x here. And we have a fractional exponent. There's a couple of different ways you can deal with that. Um, you could multiply, uh, raise both sides to the reciprocal power, so we could do that. Um, or you can go ahead and convert it back to radicals and think about it as what it really represents here. And it's the cube root of x minus 3. Remember, this becomes the index. And then we're raising that all to the power of 2. Now, if you write it that way, then you can see pretty clearly what we're going to have to do. Um, we're going to have to take the square root of both sides to get rid of the square that's on the outside there. So I get the cube root of x minus 3 equals square root of 0, which is 0. And then, of course, we see that we're going to have to raise both sides to the power of 3. 
So we're going to counteract that cube root by cubing. So we end up with x minus 3 equals 0. Now, pretty easy equation to solve. We get x equals positive 3. So we're going to add 3 to both sides. x equals positive 3. So we actually do get one value that we need to exclude from the number line. So our domain becomes negative infinity all the way to 3, not including 3. So we're going to use everything to the left of 3, and then we're going to include everything to the right of 3. So we we'll unite that with 3 to infinity, uh, not including 3. So this is our domain.